as a part of my lecture series on the chemistry of main group elements, today I would like to draw your attention to the chemistry of group 1 elements that is alkali metal elements. You all know that electronic configuration of uh, alkali metals is NS1 uh, that means they have only one S electron in their valence shell and that since these electrons are loosely held one can readily remove it and hence all these alkali metal elements show plus 1 oxygen state. And you can see from here we have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. Lithium shows little different chemistry compared to the rest of the elements in the group due to its smaller size and with water they readily form hydroxides which are strongly alkaline in nature and hence they are called alkali metals. Sodium and potassium are abundant whereas lithium, rubidium and cesium are less abundant and they are in trace amounts and francium is highly radioactive. Uh, you can imagine by just looking into the half life of uh, one of the isotopes that is 223 francium that has about 21 minutes that indicates the extent of radioactivity francium shows. As a result not much chemistry one can think of about francium. Chemistry of lithium is little different from those of uh, other group members as I said owing to smaller size. But lithium shows similarities to magnesium in terms of its properties usually known as diagonal relationship. I would discuss about those aspects at the end of this series of this lecture. And sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium ions are in large proportions in biological fluids. In fact, they perform very, very important biological functions such as maintenance of ion balances and nerve impulse conditions. Okay. And loosely held S electrons can be readily removed and hence they have low ionization energy or ionization enthalpies and all are most electropositive elements in the periodic table. In fact, alkali metals are most electropositive among the elements in the periodic table. They readily form M plus ion and obviously M plus ion size is much smaller than the M ion. As a result of shrinkage of its size due to the removal of that electron and hence the increase in the effective nuclear charge. Atomic and ionic radii increases down the group as the size increases. In fact, they have the largest size in their respective periods or rows and ionization enthalpy decreases down the group due to the increase in the size. And due to the increase in the size, hydration enthalpy also decreases down the group and lithium plus ion has larger hydration enthalpy and cesium shows minimum hydration enthalpy and the order follows this uh, sequence. This is the order of hydration enthalpy. Uh, lithium plus has maximum degree of hydration and hence all lithium salts are hydrated. For example, if you take lithium uh, chloride, it is solvated with 2 molecules of water. And due to the presence of only one valence electron, metal metal bonds are very weak and hence they are soft metals. That means one can easily cut using a knife. And the other interesting aspect of these alkali metals is they import characteristic color to an oxidizing flame. This is essentially due to the excitation of S electron to the p orbital. And of course, when we talk about electronic transitions, we have two important selection rules that is electrons within the same orbital uh, cannot be 
transmitted that is it is prohibited that means S to S transition, P to P transition, D to D transition is forbidden whereas S to P, P to D, D to F are allowed they are called Laporte allowed and another selection rule is spin selection rule. So, during electronic transition the spin should not change. This is quite opposite to the selection rule that we use in the case of nuclear magnetic resonance where the spin should change that is delta S equals plus or minus 1 whereas in case of electronic transition delta S equals 0. That means essentially this flame test the color comes as a result of N S 1 electron getting promoted excited to NP1. So, as a result of this one what happens when these electrons are coming back to the ground state they emit radiation in the visible region as a result color can be seen for the flames. For example, you can see uh, lithium shows crimson red color, sodium shows golden yellow color, potassium shows violet color and rubidium shows red violet and cesium shows blues in the respective wavelengths I have given here. For lithium it is 670.8, in case of sodium it is 589.2, in case of potassium it is 766.5 and in case of rubidium and cesium it is 780 and 455.5 nanometers. The color also you can see from the slide that is shown there. So, when we talk about the chemical reactivity we can think of a few things that comes to our mind. First of all how it reacts with air, air means it is quite obvious that how they are going to interact with oxygen. Next how they interact with water and then what kind of interaction one can anticipate when it is treated with hydrogen, nitrogen or halogens. And lastly we can also look into their interaction with organic moieties and also behavior in liquid ammonia. So, let us uh, look into the chemical reactivity here. Uh, due to the high reactivity uh, of these positively charged ions, they are exposure to air, they tarnish due to the formation of oxides which in turn react with moisture to form hydroxides. For example, if we take lithium, it readily reacts with oxygen to form lithium oxide, this is called oxide, we have O2 minus and sodium reacts with oxygen to form peroxide not oxide. Other heavier elements react with oxygen to form superoxides. Where M is potassium, rubidium, and cesium. So, you can see from this uh, slide uh, compounds and their interaction with uh, oxygen and the resulting compounds. For example, lithium gives lithium oxide and here anion is O2 minus that is oxide and, and the hydrolysis product that means when they are treated with water what would happen? In case of lithium oxide OH minus hydrolysis product sodium lithium hydroxide is formed. In case of sodium uh, peroxide is there as a result when it is reacted with water it forms hydroxide and then hydrogen peroxide. In case of potassium, rubidium and cesium we get superoxide. So, superoxide on treatment with uh, water gives hydroxide, oxygen and hydrogen peroxide. So, let me write those uh, reactions. It is for this reason they are called alkali metals Na2O plus H2O gives 2 NaOH. Similarly, sodium peroxide reacts with one equivalent of water 
to give initially sodium oxide plus H2O2 and this Na2O again reacts with another molecule of water to give sodium hydroxide and also they react with uh, nitrates to give the corresponding oxides. In this case N2 nitrogen will be liberated and these alkali metals can also react with ozone to form ozonate salts. So, these ozonate salts have a unpaired electron as a result all ozonate salts are paramagnetic in nature. Similar reactions one can anticipate when they are treated with sulphur and in, in those reactions they form sulphides and polysulphides of composition M to S X. Let me write few reactions. Sodium on treatment with uh, sulphur gives sodium sulphide. This sodium sulphide on further treatment with elemental sulphur similarly sodium can also react with the tellurium. to give the corresponding tellurides, it, it gives Na2 Te2 plus Na2 Te3. CCM also reacts in a similar fashion to give CCM sulphide. Of course, further treatment of CCM sulphide with sulfur, elemental sulfur leads to the formation of CS2, S5. So, these are the some, these are some of the reactions uh, with oxygen as well as sulfur. They are reacts with almost all halogens to give the corresponding uh, halides and uh, Alkali metal halides are well known compounds for example, sodium chlorides, potassium chloride all combinations one can think of. Uh, cesium chloride, cesium bromide, cesium iodide have the same structure and sodium chloride has a different structure. In case of cesium chloride structure the cation and anions both are 8 coordinate that you can see from the uh, structure I have shown on the right side. In NaCl there are 6 coordinate both are octahedrally coordinated the sodium and chlorine with a ratio of 1 is to 1. Okay. So, you can see and simply by looking into the radius ratio that is means radius of cation alkali metal cation and allied anions one can predict the nature of the structures and the structure adopted by a salt M plus X minus can be readily predicted considering the following rule. For example, if you consider the radius ratio that is r plus to r minus and if it falls in the range of 0.225 to 0.414, they assume zinc sulphide as pyrolyte structure. On the other hand, if they have in the range of 0.414 to 0.732, they have sodium chloride structure and if the radius ratio is greater than 0.732, they assume cesium chloride structure. Uh, radius ratio rules provides a reasonably general means of assessing the likely structure adapted by an ionic solid, but gives incorrect predictions usually when there is a significant covalent bonding. For example, in case of lithium halides, there is some covalent character is there, it is not purely ionic. In those cases probably this uh, method of prediction may not be correct and also when there is a 
borderline in case of radius ratio. For example, if the radius ratio falls in the range of 0.414 to 0.420, so it, it can have either zinc sulfide structure or sodium chloride structure. Same thing is true in between sodium chloride as well as cesium chloride. So, ionic radii are not known accurately. So, the values vary with coordination number since ionic radii essentially varies with the type of other ion we have in its vicinity. Lithium reacts with uh, nitrogen to form nitride. It is very interesting to look into lithium nitride. The salt is highly stable because of very high lattice energy from the very small lithium plus and highly charged N3 minus ions coming together. So, Li plus is highly charged and smaller in size and N3 minus is highly charged and also smaller in size and in fact N3 minus is formed by breaking a very strong NN triple bond having energy of about 941 kilojoules per mole. Essentially the combination of these two gives the energy that is sufficient to break this NN triple bond. And of course, uh, lithium nitride is highly reactive and it readily undergoes hydrolysis on treatment with water or on exposure to moisture. It forms lithium hydroxide and ammonia. So, just as sodium hydroxide is a base in water, sodium amide is a base in liquid ammonia because it is able to deprotonate acidic organic molecules, especially when they have a acidic proton bound to carbon, one can easily deprotonate it. That is the reason the sodium amides are widely used in organic synthesis to generate sodium salts. To take a typical alkali metal, treat with uh, ammonia, they form amides of this type. Or one can get amide plus H2. Of course, uh, if you take any of these alkali metals, especially if you take sodium and put into liquid ammonia, the color turns blue because of the solvated electrons. What happens there is when the sodium is put into liquid ammonia, so it forms N plus and these electrons are released. So, now ammonia what happens because of uh, the polar bonds they have, it generate delta minus on nitrogen and delta plus positive charge on hydrogen. So, now this sodium will be attracted uh, towards uh, nitrogen and whereas electrons will be coming towards this one. So, because of this solvated electrons, the color is blue in nature. And how it activates a acidic uh, hydrogen in carbon can be seen from this reaction. For example, if you take a typical hydrocarbon where H is slightly acidic and treat with sodium amide, it readily forms a sodium salt with the formation of ammonia. So, now this can be used in various organic synthetic reactions. So, all these alkali metals reacts with the hydrogen to form the ionic hydrides. So, at 70 
1073 Kelvin lithium reacts whereas rest potassium reacts at 673 K for potassium and other higher elements. Since lithium is very smaller in size, okay, it requires little higher temperature to induce reaction with hydrogen molecule to form metal hydride or lithium hydride whereas in, in the case of sodium potassium one can perform this reaction at 673 Kelvin to form the corresponding metal hydrides. And these metal hydrides are also very sensitive towards uh, water and they readily undergo hydrolysis to form the corresponding base hydroxide with the liberation of hydrogen. And this sodium hydride can also activate acidic CH proton similar to sodium amide. For example, sodium hydride on treatment with CH3 SOCH3 dimethyl sulfoxide to form a salt of this type. So, H anion is a strong base can be used to deprotonate organic molecules as I said containing relatively acidic CH groups. How about the reaction of alkali metals with carbon? So, they react with uh, carbon species to form the corresponding carbides. Let me write a couple of reactions. For example, uh, acetylene on treatment with uh, alkali metals liberate hydrogen gas to form the corresponding acetylide of course uh, which in turn react can react with another mole of metal to give fully substituted or This reaction, so ethane acts as an acid, you can see this is deprotonated and it gives the corresponding carbide and of course, uh, extensive organic chemistry is associated with alkali metals especially with lithium and organolithium reagents are extensively used in organic synthesis and they find numerous applications in, in all aspects of organic transformations. And these lithium readily reacts with alkyl halides in dry hydrocarbons. You should remember non aqueous medium. When we are reacting all these alkali metals with organic moieties, we should not use wet solvents, we have to use highly dry hydrocarbons. So, reaction of lithium with Rx, a typical alkyl halide in a dry hydrocarbon like benzene, hexane, etc. or one can also use ethers like diethyl ether or tetrahydrofuran. It forms RLI plus LIX comes out. This LIX will precipitate depending upon the nature of the solvent we are using and then can be filtered off and RLI remains in solution that can be used for further synthetic utility. This organolithium reagents are extensively aggregated together in the solid and in solution. For example, if you consider methyl lithium, how to make methyl lithium? Methyl chloride when it is react with two equivalents of lithium, methyl lithium is formed and lithium chloride is formed. So, lithium chloride can be taken out. This methyl lithium when you solidify or when you crystallize it, it 
does not exist in monomeric form, it exists in tetrameric form. Alkyl halides, there are several ways to make them. One of the methods is treatment of lithium metal directly with alkyl halides in dry hydrocarbon. Or ethers such as diethyl ether or tetrahydrofluoron, etc. The reaction will lead to the formation of organolithium reagents with the precipitation of lithium halide. So, here one can conveniently use chloro, bromo, or even iodo derivatives. So, these organolithium compounds are usually extensively aggregated together in the solid state and solution state. The reason is very simple. If you just look into a typical RLI, say CH3LI or methyl lithium, here we have one bond between carbon and lithium and the rest of the surface of lithium is exposed. Since lithium is coordinatively unsaturated and also you know the fact that lithium can get solvated. So, in absence of any other Lewis bases or donor solvents, what it does is it try to undergo association to make some sort of uh, electron deficient bonds to give temporarily coordinative saturation. This methyl lithium exists as a tetramer. So, how this tetramer gives extra stability, we can look into it. If you just recall your understanding of the methane using valence bond theory. So, we have here methane, uh, you know the concept of hybridization and before methane molecule is formed, carbon having S2, P2 electronic configuration, what it does is it promotes the S electron to the p orbital to have this kind of situation. Now, we have one electron in S and three electrons in p orbital and these four electrons orbital combine together to generate new kind of hybrid orbitals called sp3 hybrid orbitals and each one having one electron. So, now this four sp3 hybrid orbitals combine with one s one orbital of hydrogen to form four CH bonds. Okay. So, now in case of CH3 what happens? We have CH3 and one with one electron is there and of course, this one very similar to another hydrogen it combines with lithium 1s electron to form CH3Li. So, now if you just look into it, S of lithium combined with sp3 of carbon to form methyl lithium, it is similar to methane, but lithium is not coordinatively saturated. In, in the tetrameric form, what it does is, it has a structure like this. So, it assumes a cubane type structure. So, that means uh, in cubane we have 8 corners are there, each corner is occupied by methyl groups as well as lithium groups. That means alternate corners are occupied by lithium 
and methyl groups. So, if you see uh, in the position of 4 lithium atoms that can be compared to a typical a tetrahedron. So, now in this one in tetrahedron we have 4 triangular faces are there. You can consider any of these triangular faces and each triangular faces now interacts with one sp3 from ch3 and this eventually gives a cubane structure and, and of course, it is not exactly regular cubane. It, it, it is a distorted cubane. So, here if you just look into it, since 4 lithium atoms are there in the tetrahedron and each one has 1 electron. So, that means for one triangular phase, only one of the lithium atoms can donate 1 electron. So, that means essentially when 3 lithiums are there in this particular triangular phase, 3 are there, one of the lithium gives. So, that means basically here you have 4 centered 2 electron bond. That means 4 centered 2 electron bonds are formed. They are highly electron deficient. However, uh, it gives some stability to methyl lithium and this is how it looks like methyl lithium and you can see the structure of uh, methyl lithium you can clearly see that is in purple is lithium atom and this methyl groups are there with the CH shown coming out of uh, the cube. And this is how the association gives some stability in solid state. Of course, uh, when you take methyl lithium and add uh, donor solvents like pyridine, tetramethyl ethylene diamine, this association breaks up and you get individual entities coordinating to some of these Lewis bases. And alkali metal complexes form relatively very few complexes with neutral ligands. Uh, lithium salts are more soluble in solvents such as ethanol, ethers than those of other group members and lithium is 4 coordinate whereas sodium and potassium are 6 coordinate in nature. So, we can look into some simple coordination complexes here. As I said, stable complexes can be formed by multidentate ligands uh, which can encapsulate the metal ion. For example, if you have like EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, of course, there uh, we are not using for lithium, of course, in case of calcium we are using that one. But here in this case, extensively we use a multidentate ligands called crown ethers and cryptands then you may be asking what is crown ether and what is krypton? They are nothing but the poly ethers. I would come to that one later. For example, here as I said lithium can be tetra coordinated. So, lithium uh, readily forms tetramine lithium complex and, and these are all the crown ethers. In this crown ether you can see uh, variable number of oxygen atoms are there and it is a poly ether and since this is not planar and when it is puckered it appears like crown and hence the name crown ether. And the first one is 18 crown 6 and the next one we have along with oxygen we also have nitrogen donor atoms are there. This is called cryptand and in this one the cryptand uh, in the bracket square bracket 2 dot 2 dot 2 is given that essentially represents between 2 nitrogen how many uh, oxygen atoms are there and each uh, line if you consider that way you have 2 oxygen, 2 oxygen and 2 oxygen totally 6 oxygens are there uh, in the form of that alkyl chain and hence the name krypton 2 2 2 and if you have in between 2 nitrogen atoms we have 3 oxygen atoms it can be krypton 3 3 3 or if you have 2 3 2 it can be called 2 3 4 depending upon the number of oxygen atoms the whatever the numeral we are showing that changes. 
and here how it is 18 crown 6 I will show you this one. Let us write uh, they are all linked by ethylene groups. If you start counting from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that means there are 18 atoms in the ring and so it is a 18 crown and 6 oxygen atoms are there. So this is how one can write the name for uh, these crown ethers and these crown ethers depending upon the, the size and how many oxygen atoms are there, they can comfortably encapsulate these uh, uh, alkali metals to stabilize them. And krypton if you take again cation if you take this one and treat with a krypton, of course it is always reversible. Since this is a neutral ligand, the whole complex will be cationic in nature. Okay. Stability of these complexes increases if the size of M plus matches the cavity size. That means if, if whatever the cavity that, that is generated uh, in case of these crown ethers, if it is fits exactly the size of the cation then those complexes are more stable. So that is the reason whenever we are using some of these cations to be stabilized by crown ethers, we are taking the right size uh, crown ethers that you can see from this slide uh, for encapsulating or trapping lithium, you need a smaller crown ether that is 12 crown 4 and sodium is little larger. So, one should use 15 crown 5 e crown ether. In case of potassium, one can comfortably use 18 crown 6, the one I wrote here. And in case of rubidium, because of smaller, bigger size and also its coordination number also more, one can use 21 crown 7. And cesium is the largest among all elements in the periodic table, uh, leaving francium. Uh, one can use 24 crown 8 ether to capture cesium. And you can see how these encapsulates can be show, seen from that uh, the last uh, structure I have shown where potassium is encapsulated by 18 crown 6 uh, ether, other action is opposite sides so that you may not be able to see it. Similarly, cryptids can also encapsulate. Uh, these cations. And let us look into the similarities between lithium and magnesium. I was telling you in the beginning lithium rather showing similarities with uh, its own group predecessors, it shows much similarity with the next group okay, uh, element magnesium that is diagonally opposite to that one. So when we come across this kind of relationship uh, in chemical and physical behavior, we call them as diagonal relationship and lithium shows many similarities to magnesium rather than to the heavier alkali metals such as sodium or potassium. And if you consider lithium that readily forms uh, lithium oxide and similarly magnesium forms magnesium oxide and whereas sodium forms sodium peroxide. So that means there is a difference in the chemistry of lithium and sodium but similarity is there between the lithium and magnesium. And similarly, if you take lithium carbonate and heat it, it forms lithium oxide and CO2 is liberated. Similarly, magnesium carbonate on heating, it forms magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide is liberated. Whereas sodium carbonate is quite resistant and it is stable. And in order to decompose that one to form sodium oxide, you have to use very high temperature. And uh, when we look into the complexes, 
lithium forms four coordinated complexes similarly magnesium also forms four coordinated complexes tetramine li lithium cation is known similarly tetramine magnesium cation is also known and let us look into some uses of alkali metals and their uh, compounds in fact we find extensive utility of most of the alkali metals and most of their compounds in one or the other aspects in day to day life for example lithium is used in metal alloys with lead that is called white metals and they are used in bearings for motor engines and also when lithium is mixed with aluminum in a in a definite proportion that alloy is used in aircraft parts and with magnesium they are used in armor plates and of course in thermonuclear reactions lithium is used and also in electrochemical series and dry cells we know that lithium is extensively used and sodium lead alloy in making tetramethyl lead and tetraethyl lead and earlier uh, in order to increase the utility of uh, petrol for better combustion uh, tetraethyl lead used to be added as a additive and it was called as anti knocking reagents nowadays because of the toxicity of uh, tetraethyl lead uh, is no longer used as additive in petrol and that's the reason if you go and see in the petrol bunks you can see the uh, writing unleaded petrol so that means liquid sodium is used as a coolant in fast breeder nuclear reactors and potassium plays a vital role in biological systems along with sodium and potassium chloride is used in fertilizers and also potassium hydroxide sodium hydroxide also used in the manufacture of soap detergents and other things and also to absorb carbon dioxide and cesium is used in photoelectric cells and we come across many more utilities probably you can look into any standard textbook to find out more applications of alkali metals and their compounds and sodium carbonate uh, that's also called washing soda okay and sodium bicarbonate uh, nahco3 is baking soda it reacts with acidic compounds to release carbon dioxide which causes expansion of batter if it is used in the bakery products giving characteristic texture and grain for fermentation and all those things we use it how that happens sodium bicarbonate on heating to uh, modest temperature it forms sodium carbonate and liberates carbon dioxide this is responsible for the expansion of the batter <coughs> in bakery products and now you can ask yourself a question related to alkali uh, metal elements for example what is the oxygen state of sodium in sodium oxide or sodium peroxide in the gas phase the alkali metals form dimers m2 then draw a mo diagram for m2 molecule that means how to draw a mo diagram for m2 molecule and how would you synthesize sodium perchlorate starting from sodium carbonate and also cesium perchlorate and if you assume the following facts that lithium plus has 74 and cesium has 167 picometer and fluoride has 133 and iodide has 222 so predict what structures type will be adopted by the following alkali metal salts for example cesium iodide and lithium fluoride so we know the radius ratio rule and also for a particular ratio what is the standard structure it prefers to adopt under normal circumstances once when we look into those things we should be able to tell let us try to do one at a time okay so what is the oxygen state of so of course whether you take sodium oxide or sodium peroxide the oxygen state of sodium is plus 1 and and the next question uh, 
how would you synthesize? I would come back to the MO diagram for M2 molecule later. Let us look into the preparation of sodium uh, per chloride starting from sodium carbonate. So, you can take sodium carbonate and treat this one with perchloric acid. It gives sodium perchlorate. with the formation of CO2 and H2O. So, this is how starting from sodium carbonate one can prepare sodium perchlorate. And since cesium chloride and, and its salts are uh, sparingly soluble, one can think of a precipitation reaction. That means, cesium chloride uh, on treatment with sodium perchlorate. it forms cesium perchlorate plus sodium chloride. Of course, one can also here it perspirates out. So, this can be separated. Uh, one can also start from cesium carbonate way similar to uh, sodium carbonate. Treat cesium carbonate with uh, perchloric acid. It gives cesium perchlorate and CO2 plus H2O comes out. Or one can also start from cesium hydroxide. So, in this case along with cesium perchlorate water will be formed and there is no formation of carbon dioxide. So, now uh, try to look into the problem I gave you to find out the type of structure cesium chloride and lithium fluoride would have. So, look into that uh, radius ratio. Let me write for uh, so now what is given is uh, <coughs> cesium iodide, it is 167 by 220. So, it gives 0 0.76 and similarly in case of lithium fluoride the same ratio will come to this 74 for lithium and 133 for uh, fluoride this comes around 0 0.56. So, now if you compare so this value is 0 0.076 so that means it comes very close to 0 0.732 so it will have that means cesium iodide has a structure similar to cesium chloride and similarly lithium fluoride has a structure very similar to it comes 56 between 0 0.414 to 0 0.732 it comes NaCl structure it has a NaCl structure. So, about uh, in the gas phase the combination to give M to MO diagram. So, MO diagram writing is very easy uh, NS1 one electron is there. You assume this is very this atomic orbital. You consider another N s 1 from another uh, alkali metal and both have one electron each. So, now they combine together to form a bonding and anti bonding you call sigma. This is sigma star and here both electrons will there and this is how the, the MO diagram can be written for a typical M2 molecule very similar to hydrogen molecule. So, uh, one can readily write this kind of MO diagrams just by looking into the valence electrons and their right combination can give MO diagrams for the molecules we are looking for. So, this completes about uh, alkali metal chemistry and four important aspects I had discussed. When we talk about chemical reactivity, one can look into the reaction with air that means oxygen and reaction with water, how it reacts with water and then how it reacts with hydrogen and then how it reacts with halogens. Because whatever the compounds we come across will be either oxides 
or hydrides or halides and then one should also look into how one can make a element to carbon bond that means organometallic chemistry. So, here uh, I showed one method of formation of uh, organolithium reagents. Uh, one can take alkyl halide and treat with two equivalents of lithium and precipitate out one equivalent of lithium halide and form one equivalent of organolithium compound and organolithium compounds and these reactions has to be carried out strictly under inert atmospheric conditions using very dry solvents because of their tendency to undergo hydrolysis to form lithium oxide and eventually more water is there lithium hydroxide. And organolithium chemistry is very extensive and uh, that is also very similar to Grignard reagents. Probably I would give more information about the utility of organolithium reagents when I discuss about the organometallic chemistry of main group elements. Let me summarize the chemistry of group 1 elements. So, group 1 elements and their compounds follow the periodic properties and trends with very little or no variations. And as you know alkali metals are highly reactive and form basic oxide oxides and water soluble halides containing M plus cations, the group oxidation state is plus 1. So, they all form M plus cations. Among alkali metal compounds, whether we consider hydrides, oxides, halides or even organometallic compounds, ionic properties dominate the chemistry uh, except in case of lithium because of its uh, smaller size, all compounds of lithium have some covalent character. Nevertheless, the rest of the elements uh, ionic property dominates. And in case of uh, lithium, it resembles more of magnesium uh, due to the diagonal relationship. That means, the chem chemistry of lithium can be uh, compared with the chemistry of magnesium. So, this completes the discussion on uh, group 1 elements. In my next lecture, I will be dealing with the chemistry of group 2 elements. Thank you very much.